Welcome to another Out of Spec podcast. I'm joined by Brandon, and we have some nerd level 9000 talk about charging, specifically what the heck is going on. Uh, as we were recording another episode, our friend Ryan called, and uh, Ryan has a Tesla Model S Plaid, just like mine, with this CCS adapter. It goes from mm -hmm. CCS to Tesla. And he was getting over 500 amps, and not by a little bit. He was getting 590 amps to his car. That's a full 250 kilowatts. He said he saw 253 peak using this adapter, which we did not think was possible. So let's talk a little bit about CCS limitations, the hardware, and what we actually think is going on here because this is really freaking cool. Yeah, it's really cool because – when Tesla officially brought the CCS1 adapter to the market, on the product page, it lists up to 250 kilowatts. A lot of the hubbub on Twitter was that, well, there's no way you can actually get 250 kilowatt because CCS Max is at 500 amps. But apparently we've been proven wrong today. <laughs> right. Well, and, and the thing, we need to talk about this 500 amp maximum. It's always mm -hmm. been my understanding that all of the hardware, the software, the vehicles, when using typical CCS in public infrastructure, I'm excluding Tesla's use of it in Europe, which they go mm -hmm. well above 600 amps with CCS2. Um, Everything is designed around 500 amp peak and nominal. I mean, that's just like mm -hmm. a limitation. Mercedes EQS, Rivian R1T, uh, yeah. what else? BMW iX, i4, EQE, a whole bunch of vehicles cannot charge faster than anywhere from 190 to 220 kilowatts because of this 500 amp limitation that everyone is designing around. And what's really even more interesting than this is I don't think it's actually written in code anywhere, this 500 yeah. amps. I don't know that to be true, but what what's going on here that we're seeing a public installation output 590 amps? Yeah, so it's interesting because this is a Signet Electrify America installation. And for those are, that are not familiar with kind of the setup of that, you essentially have two power cabinets feeding one dispenser for a 350 kilowatt nameplate dispenser. That's at 1,000 volts. So pretty unlikely that you'll actually get that power output. Um, but the way those cabinets are set up, we looked up the specifications for those specific cabinets and they can actually output up to 350 amps, but they're only feeding typically 500 amps to the dispenser because it's, you have two ratings essentially for power conversion. You have current as the conversion you have, or actually get three, I guess. So you have the current, you have the voltage, and then you have actual total power conversion capability because you're taking that AC making it into DC for the DC fast charging, hence the name. Um, but typically it's limited to 500 amps. And I'm not 100% sure whether that's just an industry gentleman's agreement of sorts, kind of like the 155 mile an hour speed limit in Europe, right. uh, or if it's actually a technical standard limitation because Tesla doesn't follow it in Europe with their CCS2. So clearly the plugs are capable of it if designed accordingly. Uh, Delta on their DC fast charging dispensers that are most commonly used by EVgo in North America, they actually will display on the screen if you go to the session info, I believe it, they call it, yep. uh, that gives you the volts, amps, and total power. It'll show a max of 540 amps, which I always thought was pretty interesting because no one actually goes over 500 amps until today. But actually, even on that topic of Delta, I was charging the Lucid Air on the Delta recently. And, you know, it has such high voltage. And we're talking about mm -hmm. total power conversion. As the voltage crept up on the Lucid, the maximum level under the current started to derate because the, the charger can't wow. do 500 amps at 1,000 volts. That would be a 500 kilowatt charger then. Yeah. And we can get into the naming of chargers all around. But let's talk about this adapter. This is the same adapter, mm -hmm. the North American spec one that Ryan's using. Um, and it's rated for up to 500 volt DC, which falls totally in line with any mm -hmm. Tesla current currently on the market today. And most impor importantly, it's current limitation. I'm assuming nominal is 300 amps DC, but that mm -hmm. would not equal, uh, through 250 kilowatts that Tesla is advertising this. Here's the yeah. thing. This is pretty much a dumb adapter. I mean, there's probably some thermistors and some other little things in here, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. The car is 
has to say, here's how much power I want through this side. And because it's a Model S Plaid and it can take, you know, up to 250 kilowatts at a supercharger, the car is going to ask this side, give me all the juice you can give me. And what's mm -hmm. crazy is the Signet Charger gave more than what it's rated for. Yeah, I don't know if it's a matter of the software is not configured correctly or maybe it is. Uh, maybe this is something new that we're discovering and maybe Tesla talked some people into allowing more than 500 amps for because they have that kind of influence. But I would be concerned personally with the amount of contacts that you have using the adapter because you're going from CCS cable into the adapter and then you're going from the adapter into the vehicle. That's a lot of points for heat to be building up in a relatively small space and 590 amps is not a small amount of power. Totally agree. And of course, any corrosion on those connections or anything can increase resistance massively. Now, mm -hmm. thankfully, at least on each side, internally on the car's charging port, hopefully within this adapter, I'm sure it is. And then also on the yeah. charging side, there's temperature uh, checks throughout each one of those situations. And any one of those connection points can derate the charging session to keep it at yeah. a maximum limitation. So I'm not so convinced it's uh, not safe, let's just say, but let's just add to the stream the proof. Jordan's running the show in the back end. I guess he can bring up some of the, the footage. There we go. 257 kilowatts going to this thing. And if we actually mm -hmm. pull up on the Model S display, you'll see that over 500 amp, 590 right there. This was at a little bit lower voltage. Um, but mm -hmm. that's, so here's the thing. I plugged my Model S with the CCS adapter into our local EA station, which are the new BTC units. And mm -hmm. I saw a maximum of 500 amps going to the car as normal. Mm -hmm. Why is the Signet in this case given us more? I don't think we have a real reason. Either it's a bug and there's no safety limitations and the hardware itself, you know, with two of those cabinets can do technically 700 amps, probably at that voltage, I would think. Um, mm -hmm. Or is it just Signet chargers rock and they'll just give all the juice? What do you think? Uh both, I guess. Uh, I would say it's probably not intended unless there's something that has changed without anyone knowing about it. Uh, and clearly they're capable of delivering the power. So I would say they rock and it's either a bug or a feature. And it's pretty interesting as well that like just, what is it, two, three weeks ago, Tesla announced this adapter mm -hmm. and it officially said up to 250 kilowatts. And we're like, you'll never find a station out in the public that can do that. That's such BS. Yeah. And this is not even the first time I'm hearing of it. A friend of mine who had been testing this adapter mentioned, hey, I also saw 250 kilowatts at mm. Electrify America. And I'm like, ah, oh, that can't be right. You must have missed something. But no, now we have photographic proof and video mm. proof yeah. of it going up to 250 kilowatts. That's pretty incredible. And, and I think uh, I'd really be curious to see what the comment section thinks of this. A, do you think the 500 amp limitation is a design limitation, a gentleman's agreement, something that is just considered to be the maximum, or is it hard coded in CCS, uh, you know, sort of whatever their, their limitation code would be uh, to mm -hmm. allow no more than that? Because 250 kilowatts through this little thing, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. A little concerning, but I think it's generally fine. Uh, I'd be very interested to pull some logs on a charging session through that and either use like a testing box that you can actually see the signals sent between the station and the car to see what exactly is happening there and pull the station logs. But obviously we don't have access to that level of data. Maybe Electrify America will watch this and they'll see and answer some questions for us. Doubt that will happen. Anyway. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, I think it, it's pretty cool for sure. Everyone should be pumped. We know this thing can do as advertised now. And um, mm -hmm. we'll do a whole nother topic about why maybe it's beneficial for Tesla owners to use this uh, mm -hmm. with other charging networks other than superchargers for cost reasons because superchargers yep. are getting quite expensive and EA and EVgo and others may have better pricing models for the end user. Um, which is really interesting. But at the end of the day, there you go. Tesla going over 500 amps. Absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, sorry, yeah. the Signet charger going over 500 amps. Didn't think I would ever see that out in the public anytime this soon. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anyone else has experienced that, definitely reach out to us. It'd be interesting to see if 
maybe the ABB hardware or the new BTC hardware, uh, depending on the configuration, could potentially do that as well. And I think what I'm actually going to do is take my Model S to one of those Delta units that claim mm -hmm. up to 540 and see if I can get it to go over 500 with this. Because we know... Yeah, I mean, even if you get 540, it'd be great. Yeah, because then we know, okay, the car is just asking for the power. Of course it is. But when I plug yeah. in a Rivian, a Hummer, or uh, anything else that might draw 500 amps, not saying the Hummer does, but uh, you know, an iX yeah. or an i4... Um, those cars are only requesting up to 500 amps. They're not requesting more. The Teslas with the adapter will request more because they don't know if they're mm -hmm. on a supercharger or something else. And they're just saying, here's the maximum I could take at the moment. Yeah, I, I think it's really awesome. And especially that now Tesla owners have an equivalent option, not just a close to equivalent option of using a V3 supercharger at potentially half the price or less, depending on the market. Yeah, that's a no brainer at this point. Super cool. So anyway, thanks for watching another out of spec podcast. Can't wait to see your thoughts in the description below. Thank you, Ryan, for sending us some of that info and we'll see you on another episode soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.